We are in an epidemic of osteoporosis. 10 million Americans have it, and one in three older women will get it. We urgently need public health strategies to maintain bone health and prevent osteoporosis. Might fruits and vegetables be the unexpected natural answer to the question of osteoporosis prevention? Evidence from a variety of studies strongly points to a positive link between fruit and vegetable consumption and indexes of bone health, such as bone mineral density. And the size of the effect in the older women is impressive, uh, doubling the fruit intake associated with a 5% higher spine mineralization, and the same relationship with young women too. And eating lots of fruit in childhood may protect bones throughout life, something that was not found for milk intake, as I've explored before. Bone health isn't just about calcium. There are several key nutrients in fruits and vegetables and beans associated with better bone mineral density, but does that translate into lower hip fracture risk? The Singapore Chinese Health Study found that a diet rich in plant-based foods, namely vegetables, fruits, and beans such as soy, indeed may reduce the risk of hip fracture, but why? The underlying mechanism in postmenopausal osteoporosis is an imbalance between bone cessation and bone formation, and oxidative stress may play a role in this balance. Uh, there are two types of bone cells, the bone-forming osteoblasts and the bone-dismantling osteoclasts. Osteoblasts are continually laying down new bone, while osteoclasts chisel away old bone, and they use free radicals as the molecular chisel to chip away our bone. Too many free radicals in our system, though, may lead to excessive bone breakdown. Antioxidant defenses appear markedly decreased in osteoporotic women. Elderly osteoporotic women were found to have consistently lower levels of all natural antioxidants tested. Because excessive free radicals may contribute to bone loss, it's important to elucidate the potential role antioxidant-rich fruits play in mitigating the bone loss that leads to the development of osteoporosis. The thought is that fruits upregulate the bone-building cells and downregulate the bone-eating cells, tipping the balance towards greater bone mass. So let's put a fruit to the test. Uh, which one are we going to pick? Well, dried plums were chosen because they have among the highest antioxidant ranking among commonly consumed fruits and vegetables, and because the researchers scored a grant from the California Dried Plum Board. When you think of prunes, you think of bowels, not bones, but over a decade ago, researchers at Oklahoma State tried giving a dozen prunes a day to a group of postmenopausal women using a dozen dried apple rings as a control. After three months, only the subjects who consumed the prunes had significant elevations in an enzyme marker of bone formation, although prunes didn't seem to affect markers of bone breakdown. So prunes may help more with building bones than preventing bone loss, though the reverse was found with almonds, so maybe a little prune-almond trail mix is in order. While this bump in bone formation indices, one might expect um, with this uh, improvement, uh, one might expect if they did a longer study, we would actually see an impact on bone mineral density. And nine years later, just such a study was done. Twelve months on dried plums versus apples, and both dried fruit regimens appeared to have bone protective effects, though the prunes seemed to work better in the arm bone and spine. So the Dried Plum Marketing Board wants everyone to know that dried plums are the most effective fruit in both preventing and reversing bone loss. Uh, but only two fruits have ever been tested, plums and apples. But if this uh, does pan out for other plants, a fruit and vegetables approach may provide a very sensible and natural alternative therapy for osteoporosis treatment, one that is likely to have numerous additional health-related benefits. All we have to do is convince people to actually do it.